Hello students, Ms. Watson here, and today we're going to study ozone. Now as you can see from this picture, there is good ozone and there is bad ozone, and we're going to take a look at both of these things. So our learning goal for today is to describe the effects of ozone in the different layers of the atmosphere. So first of all, there are several different layers of the atmosphere. This just shows the two that we're going to be looking at today, but there are many other levels. So the troposphere is closer down to the Earth, between 0 and 10 kilometers above the Earth. And then above that is the stratosphere from 10 to 50 kilometers above the Earth. And you can see the ozone layer is near the bottom of the stratosphere. And I'm sure you've heard of the ozone layer before. This is a protective layer. It helps us on Earth. And it needs to be in the stratosphere for it to be considered good ozone. When that ozone comes down into the troposphere, that's when we start calling it bad ozone. And it can start to cause negative effects on Earth. So first of all, we'll look at the stratospheric ozone. So this is the ozone layer, and this is something that we need to worry about protecting because it helps us uh, sort of get rid of the UV light that's coming down towards Earth. So you can see there are three types of UV light, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC is the worst one, the most dangerous, and you can see that all of that is being protected by the ozone layer. Most of UVB is being protected as well, and some of UVA. So all of this UV light would normally be coming down to Earth, and we know that ultraviolet light can cause all sorts of problems uh, for humans. It can cause cancer. It can also cause problems for other species, not just humans. And so it's good that the ozone layer is protecting us from these negative negative effects. So ozone protects us from the ultraviolet radiation and it's actually caused by the radiation interacting with oxygen uh, molecules. So we'll take a look at what's actually happening here. Now before we start, we just need a little bit of terminology. Oxygen atoms are just a single oxygen by itself. Oxygen molecules are when there are two oxygens attached together, and ozone are when there are three oxygens attached together. So in this picture, we have three ozone molecules, and we have one oxygen molecule. So we can see, first of all, that ultraviolet light will come and it'll break up the oxygen molecule. So that this is how we're going to end up forming some um, ozone. So it breaks up the oxygen molecule. It can also hit an ozone molecule and break it into oxygen molecule and oxygen atom. So we can see one of the other oxygen atoms can attach to the oxygen molecule and make a new molecule of ozone. And then if more UV light comes and hits uh, some ozone, it'll split up into an oxygen molecule, oxygen atom again, and then another oxygen atom from elsewhere can come and attach and form some ozone. So each of those times that UV light is coming and hitting one of these ozone molecule, or sorry, one of these ozone molecules, that would normally be coming through to Earth. But because it hits ozone and ozone uses that energy to split itself up, that energy is dissipated and it no longer comes to Earth. So that's how it's protecting us. So there's something called chlorofluorocarbons. And these are negative things uh, that are used often in aerosols and things like that that humans created. They're not natural. And when they end up in the ozone layer, they can actually destroy the ozone. So when the ozone is being destroyed, more UV light is coming towards Earth, which has a negative impact. So let's take a look at how that happens. So the one in black and green there is a chlorofluorocarbon. And if UV light hits that, one of the chlorines or one of the fluorines can come off and interact with an ozone molecule. That will split it off and leave some oxygen uh, um, molecules. And then the, um, another oxygen atom can come join on to the oxygen atom that's attached to the chlorine or fluorine. And that allows the chlorine or fluorine to go interact with another ozone molecule after that. And so one chlorine or fluorine can actually interact with many, many different ozone molecules and break them all up. Now let's take a look at the other type of ozone. This is ozone in the troposphere, and this is the negative type of ozone. It causes smog, and smog can cause all sorts of breathing problems for a lot of people. Um, it's caused by reactions of carbon monoxide, 
nitrous oxide and volatile organic compounds and when those react with sunlight that causes smog. So usually these um, different compounds come from modical vehicle exhaust, industrial emissions, and chemical solvents. So these different types of things cause these chemicals that interact with the sunlight and interact with the ozone to cause smog. So how does this happen? Well, we can see that factories, vehicles, refineries, power plants, all of these things um, produce the nitrous oxides and the volatile organic compounds that create the ozone and then other things like uh, engines and power plants produce fine particular particulate matter and that ma particulate matter along with the ozone combines together to create the smog especially when it's heated together under the sun. So our learning goal today, can you describe the effects of ozone in the different layers of the atmosphere? If you can do that, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video and if you're still having some questions, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.